Hello and welcome to another episode of The Han on Fire, brought to you by Firewise Learning Academy. I'm your host, Tim Davis. The Han on Fire is a podcast and YouTube channel featuring education, commentary, and conversation with world-renowned fire forensic scientist, Dr. John DeHaan. If you have any questions for Dr. DeHaan, please email them to questions at thehaanonfire.com. The pugilistic stance is a posture that some fire victims are found in. But what is it evidence of? That's what Dr. DeHaan talks about in today's episode. DeHaan on Fire contains discussion and video not suitable for all audiences. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. Dr. DeHaan, what is the pugilistic stance and is it evidence that the victim was alive before the fire? Oh yeah, when you have a when you have fire in a dead body, uh, a lot of the critical information and conclusions um, often come from the the forensic pathologist who conducted the postmortem. And uh, you know, while those individuals are usually extremely well qualified medically to look at the body, most of them have never been involved in a fire and even come out and watch test fires and things like that that we've set at our courses and things like that. I've, all the years I've been involved in fire death investigation, I only, I've only encountered a real handful of forensic, uh, sorry, forensic pathologists that know anything about fires enough that I would trust them with their, you know, with the conclusions uh, being reliable. And one of the most common ones is uh, the conclusion is the, the position of the body um, uh, has, uh, you know, definitive interpretive uh, properties. That this is this indicates what the individual was doing, uh, whether they were alive at the time they were exposed to the fire. And one of the most common uh, postures or positions is the the um, what's called a pugilistic posture, and that that refers to the fighter stance. The back is bent over, the knees are flexed, um, the arms are raised, and the hands are clenched together in front of the face, um, and um, you know, it looks dramatic. The problem is that um, after watching 50 or 60 uh, human cadavers uh, react to fires, you realize that no, it's a strictly physical reaction of the muscle and tendon tissues to fire exposure. It has nothing to do with whether they were alive or not. And so when you get somebody that says, oh, his hands were up, and it was clenched in front of his face. He was fight. He was. He saw the fire coming. He was hiding from the fire. Well, that's bull nonsense. Um, and uh, I've watched people who have been dead for many weeks, uh, well preserved, but dead for many weeks, achieve that position based on where the heat is coming from. Because what happens is the muscle, the skin shrinks when exposed to heat. Uh, the muscles shrink if the fire is, it has enough duration. The tendons uh, and ligaments that hold the joints together, uh, they shrink. And that what happens is that the, the natural reaction of the, of the bones then, uh, to which those are attached, is to clench the fists. Sometimes in rare instances, if, especially if the hands or the backs of the hands are exposed uh, more than the fronts, uh, the fingers will actually flex backwards, but most of the time they, they're much more likely to, to clench forwards based only on the thermal effects on the tissue. And so you get this, um, and the longer the, longer the fire, uh, the more uh, conspicuous the, the movement might be. Uh, if they're lying on a, on, a, on a combustible, like a sofa or a chair or particularly a bed, and that catches fire, sometimes, and sometimes weakens it in a particular way. We've watched cadavers roll off of beds and fall out of chairs and things like that. And it, it, he didn't see the fire coming. He's been dead a long time. And uh, it was just a matter of the mechanical reaction. And what's also interesting, well, I, I had one individual um, that, that we allowed to burn for six or seven hours and he was lying on his back, started the fire in the clothing attached to him. He was lying on his back on a mattress. And as the fire progressed, his knees came up. Uh, and in fact, eventually, his 
a one entire uh, femur, the top of the leg, actually rose to the vertical position. And uh, But one hand came up, one arm came up, and he kind of waved at the camera over about a three-minute period. And then when the tissues, tendons and things burned through, the arm collapsed in a different direction. And so there's a lot of movement and to assume that what you see, uh, even when the body is untouched uh, after a fire, that's the way they started during the exposure. That's a, that's a bad, you know, that's a bad guess. And that's all it is, is, is kind of this mythology about uh, that. If there's an extended fire, like if it gets under the body, then you get com complicated, you know, contrary motions and things like that. Uh, but to see, you know, somebody actually physically fall out of, or a cadaver uh, physically fall out of a, uh, out of a bed uh, is an indication that he was alive or he, he or she was alive at the time of the fire. It's just physical reaction and understanding, understanding that is critical. Thanks for watching another episode of The Han on Fire brought to you by Firewise Learning Academy. If you have any questions for Dr. DeHaan, please email them to questions at the Han on Fire. And if you haven't subscribed to the if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Ring the bell to get notifications of new uploads to the channel and don't forget to set your devices to receive those updates. For now, signing off for Firewise Learning Academy and the Han on Fire. I'm your host, Tim Davis. See you next time.